Hi, South Point family. Welcome to our Baptism Roundtable. I'm Bree Barber, and I'm the Preschool Ministry Director here at South Point. I feel like we should cut and start all over again. Can we do that tonight? Are you serious? No, we're, we're live. live. No, we we're can't. Live. There are no what? edits. We yes. can't cut tonight? This no. is a live oh, blooper reel. Oh, oh okay. okay. Sorry about that. Carry on. Tonight, we're going to be talking about baptism with our entire ministry team, as you heard. That's us. Um, let's go around and introduce everyone, uh, and please share your role here at South Point. Do you have a name? I already said mine. Oh. I'm Bree Barber. Are you? Yeah. Oh. I'm Jen Curtis. I'm the family ministry pastor here at South Point. Hey everybody, I'm Jillian Hamilton. I'm the middle school director. I'm Kayla Smith. I'm the high school director. And hey friends, I'm Joe Tesseldine and I'm the elementary director. Hi, Joe. You guys did good. <laughs> uh, remember my name? Yes. Woo! Woo! <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> We're done. I feel like we can end now. You're welcome. <laughs> So, what are we doing? Yeah, I think it's we... Jill. Are we? Oh, do we have oh, someone in the lovely Remember, this is live. Oh, this is we got to keep going. <laughs> Wait, we have so, someone doing the chat. Just a heads up, everybody. We would really like to know they're here. So, please drop your name in the chat. Our lovely Paula Cox, our go. cause and care pastor, will be moderating the chat and will tell you, hey. Also, at the end, we will have some time for Q&A. So, please drop your questions into the chat. Drop them in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, and me. as South Point plans for our upcoming baptism, if you are anything like me, you begin to wonder, well, Let's hope not. Yeah. <laughs> how do I know if my student or child is ready for baptism? Maybe yeah. How do I start I the conversation about baptism? That's a good question. Um, oh, and yeah. um, what does it mean to be baptized? Ooh, okay, That's a good question. So our family ministry team is here for you and wants to help you through these questions. That's us? That's, that's you? That's, us. that's what okay. we're doing. That, that's what tonight is all about. So um, tonight our family ministry team will be discussing and answering these very questions. If you have any additional questions, please put them in the chat and we will get you those answers. If we know the answers. Yeah, otherwise, we might wait until later to get you the answers. So <laughs> Maybe. Let's see. Okay. Yes. Parents, we know that these past seven months have not been easy. But if ever there was a time that your kids needed you to be their primary spiritual leader, this season has shown us the importance of that. Please, don't feel overwhelmed with this. Um, the reason that we're here tonight is that we want to help you. When it comes to God, Jesus, and the Bible— Sometimes we have a lot of questions, and not just our kids or students have questions, but all of us. I have questions. Do I you have guys questions. have questions? Oh, I have questions. Lots of, Lots of questions. questions. All the questions. Time. Like, did God really part that sea? <laughs> like, were the fish, like, looking like, what are you guys doing? And then, how did they stop? Yeah. Like, like Nemo, like, let us out here. Let <laughs> yeah. us come with I feel like you. the sea, like, parted, and then, like, all the fish are looking, but did any of the fish fall out? Yeah. What did flying fish do in that time? That's a good question. Right. Flying fish. Same That's thing. interesting. The They're pigs. real. Flying uh -huh. Yeah, that takes fly. Also, like, what happens if I mess up? Mm. Does God really love everyone? Everyone? Yeah. Everyone? Is he really Why? annoying people? He really does. He loves <laughs> everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Remember, well, you still got to work here. My question is, like, did a big fish really swallow Jonah? Like, a fish. Like, how big of a fish are we talking about? Or, like... Was it like a whale or maybe like the megalodon? <laughs> the megalodon. Who's still swimming the in the seas now. Yes. yes. Hopefully it didn't chew. We have lots of fossil teeth. Just, of the you know, megalodon. one swallow. It just, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he came out. Okay. And the most important question of all. Did Adam and Eve have belly buttons? Ooh. That's a question a that could keep you up I at do. night. That is a tough one. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say no. Any's or Audis? I wonder what kind they had. <laughs> belly button lint, animal <laughs> hair. You said no? Yeah. I said no. Joe's uh, on the record of saying they did not debate. have belly buttons. What do you guys yeah. think? And I'm sure no, you all have a ton more. So this is an exciting mm -hmm. time in your child's life. They're asking questions about their faith. They're wondering about God and about his love for them. Mm -hmm. They may be asking a lot of questions about Jesus. Questions that, frankly, you might struggle with yourself, and that's okay. Or maybe they have questions um, that just don't have a simple answer. And that is also okay. This is just a starting point for you and your kids to begin a lifelong conversation about faith. So tonight, we're going to take just a few minutes and talk about what we teach as a church. Okay, so at, in elementary, we start the conversation off pretty simply about sin and that we all sin and that sin separates us from God. Um, but it was it's okay because God has this big plan for us. And 
Um, we use John 3.16 then to explain God's plan, that God loved the world so much that he sent his only son. So God gave us his son um, for all of us that believe, then we receive this great gift called eternal life. Mm-hmm. That's good okay. stuff. So like John 3.16 says, God loves us. He is for us, he accepts you, and he sees you. God loves us despite our brokenness. And when we behave in a way that's harmful to ourselves, this separates us from God. So this is called sin. Our sin keeps us from seeing what is true about God, ourselves, and about others. So God knew that we would sin, and he knew that we would hide and be scared. Uh, he, he knew that we would think maybe God would want to punish us for this sin, but God does not want to punish us. He wants to free us. No amount of good behavior and no amount of sin will change the way he feels about us. And to prove this, he sent his only son, Jesus. Jesus paid the price for our sin with his death. So after three days, Jesus was resurrected from the dead, proving ultimate power. And when we put our faith in him, he has the power to transform our lives and to make us new. And we know that we believe in God. So the next step uh, in your faith is to get baptized. This is where belief and baptism come into play. The book of Acts is a book of actions of the new church, and in there alone, we are called to be baptized 11 times. 11. And in Mark 16, 16, it says, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So even Jesus was baptized. Hold up. Jesus was baptized? The man himself. Yeah. <laughs> wow. The man. Wow. All right. The, just not a myth, sure. but the legend. The real thing? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. So in Matthew chapter 3, uh, Jesus went to John the Baptist and requested that John baptize, or baptize him. And John was like, what? Like, <laughs> me? You want me to baptize you? Like, you're the one who should be baptizing me. And Jesus replied, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. Okay, so I've heard you all talk a lot about sin. So let's dive into that a little deeper. Um, What do you mean by that? Okay, so in elementary, we kind of stick to the basics, that sin is missing the mark. Um, And that just means that this mark that the Bible teaches us is, you know, how we live our lives and what we should do. Um, We just don't live up to that. None of us can live up to that. So from an elementary perspective, you know, it's cheating, it's lying, um, it's probably disrespecting your parents or not obeying them. And all these things, what we want them to really understand is that that sin then starts separating us from God. Yeah. And like for our students, we teach sin is being separated from God too. Because we don't want our students to get stuck in the feeling of like shame and then turning and hiding because of sin. Uh, We talk about how sin can continuously separate us from God. But we talk about the freedom of living in grace and what grace means. So um, to recap, what we've really been talking about so far is salvation. Salvation is when we confess that we believe that Jesus died for our sins and rose again. The ne- then the next step in your faith journey is to get baptized. So once you've made the decision to dedicate your life to Jesus, the next step for you is baptism. Okay, so why is baptism so important and what exactly does it mean? So guys, think about this. Baptism is an outward symbol of what has already occurred inside. So for a married couple, wedding rings are an important symbol, right? A wedding ring tells everyone that they're married. But the wedding ring isn't what made the couple married. In fact, if one of them loses their wedding ring, they're still married, right? Mm, Shocker. (laughs) So baptism is the same way. It's a symbol that we belong to Jesus and we've committed our lives to him. I just love that analogy of the wedding ring and how clearly that kind of shows what baptism is. You know, it's that symbol. And even though you take that wedding ring off, you're still married. It's the same thing with baptism once you make that um, confession to God. And baptism is just the next step so you can show others. Yeah, and like at your wedding, like you have your friends and family witness your marriage. Like even Mm -hmm. if they weren't there, you'd still, you know, be married because you've made that decision Mm -hmm. and that commitment. But you just share that moment with your family and your friends. Yeah. But baptism is like a big party, too. Yeah. It's just as exciting as getting married. That's good. Mm-hmm. All right. So now we're going to transition to our Q&A time. Uh, let's talk about some questions that we frequently get asked in family ministry. And at this time, audience, please feel free to type any of your own questions in the chat. And our lovely Miss Paula will get those questions over to us. All right. So we got any good questions coming in? I got some good questions. All right, hit us up. Let's start with this. Okay. What is the perfect age to get baptized? 
Wow. That's a good question. Yeah, that is an excellent question, and it's one we get all the time in elementary because um, everybody wants to know, is this the right age or that the right age? Um, well, here at South Point, we, pa- we practice a believer's baptism. So the right age is really when a child understands um, what Jesus did for them, and, and they understand it and they believe it. Um, We don't want a child that can just recite what they've learned in the lesson. Mm -hmm. We really want them to believe that whole John 3.16, that God loved, God gave, we believe, we receive, um, all around that. So I hate to put an age to that because I think there, again, it's very personal and it's each child is different. But when I really get pressed to put an age, I'm going to say, I'm going to honestly tell you around second or third grade. At least. Um, because I feel like that's where a child can start owning their own faith and truly understanding what they believe. And it's just not a recitation of yeah. something they've heard. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think um, to add on to that, um, something that is super important to me is that kids understand that at church that they are honored um, and that they're loved and that what their opinion is or what they think matters. And so if we have a first grader or a kindergarten who says, I really believe um, that I should get baptized right now, we're not, we're not going to tell them no. Like we want them to understand that like the church is a place where they were honored and they were um, what they believed was true. All right. Um, Next question I have here. Do we need to get baptized again? So I struggle with this. Um, so when I was in my early teens, um, I had my defining moment um, where I accepted Jesus for who he who he is and what he did for me. Um, and then I decided to get baptized. And I went to a Methodist church at the time, and we did um, spring clean. Um, and I kind of go back and forth because at South Point we do immersion baptism. And I'm just like, well, like did it count? And I'm like, I had a discussion with one of my previous pastors and he was like, if you had that defining moment in your heart and like it it was true and like you decided to um, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and follow him, like your baptism, even if you were sprinkled, like it is true. Like it was your, your uh, celebration with your family and friends uh, from your, your inward decision that you made. Mm -hmm. So like, um, it's, it's an outward, outward, um, help me with the word. Like profession, basically. Yep. Right. Yeah. And when you say sprinkling, what does that mean? So I was not dunked. So um, they they basically like poured some water on my head. Um, so I wasn't uh, emerged. So like at South Point, like if you see the the videos, like you you know you dunk them and like you come back out of the water. Um, so different different religions and different organizations they do different things. Um, but we. South Point follows, like you can see in um, John, submerged and emerged Jesus in the water and brought him up. So we try to, you know, be as close to the Bible as we as we can. Yeah. And we do that because uh, that signifies the death, the burial, and the resurrection right. of Jesus. Right. And so that's why we um, believe in the immersion, believe in baptism. Yeah, and I guess around that whole conversation, one of the questions I had when I came into South Point and. I started walking closer with Jesus because of being at South Point. Could I get baptized again? I mean, yeah. Like, if you feel led to do so, like, absolutely. Like, there's not a, the Bible didn't say, like, there's a limit. Like, if you want to feel like you want to reconfess your faith, again, it's a public statement of, like, the state of your heart, basically. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you feel led to do so, like, Mm -hmm. go for it. Go for it, yeah, definitely. You can, but do you have to? You don't have to. No, you don't have to. That's good. All right, here's a question from Mary. It says, do you have to be baptized to go to heaven? I could take this one. Um, No, we, you know, at South Point, we believe in the believer's baptism. So once you uh, believe what Jesus did on the cross for you, for your sins, and that he forgave you for all your sins, uh, that is when, you know, you have the salvation uh, that is solid. Um, So baptism, like we've been talking about, is just the outward uh, profession, uh, an outward symbol of that. Um, So baptism. So your salvation, (laughs) yeah, your salvation is what gets you um, into heaven. The baptism is just the symbol of that. Yes. It's kind of the next step, but it's not required. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we... I was going to say, yeah, we, you know, we don't believe in the works gets you to heaven. You know, it's just by God's grace. So thankfully. 
Uh, thankfully, is yes. for sure. <laughs> All right. What if your child comes to you and says, I don't want to, I'm not ready? Then they're not ready. Then um, I think yeah. that's perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah. And like, we have conversations with our students a lot. Like, I don't know what to believe. And like, I don't, like, I don't, I don't know. And like, it's perfectly fine because like, we want our kids to own their faith and we want them to have like an authentic faith. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like, well, what questions do you have? Like, let's talk through this. And it's just like, my goal is not like, you need to get baptized. Like, no, my goal is to love you like Jesus love you and like show, show you Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so you can know him and have a real relationship with him. So like, if you're not ready, like, that's okay. Yeah. yeah I would say just, you know, definitely talk to your leader, talk to your parents, maybe join a small group. Um, and then further, you know, are there questions that you have? And then that way you can make that decision on your own, make that your own choice, your own your faith. Mm -hmm. And parents, if your child isn't ready to get baptized, that's okay. And there is mm -hmm. none of that decision or um, unwill readiness on their part that makes you a failure as a parent mm -hmm. or makes you any less of a parent. Like you are still the perfect parent for that child. Like you are who God created you to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that mm -hmm. and there again i mean it's like we've all said it's a believer's baptism so they need to be ready to make that decision yeah. for themselves yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. amen all right here's a good one what should i expect from a south point baptism before COVID, it was like a party. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, no, it was a great <laughs> thing. It was a big party. <laughs> so slash 2020. Yeah. How about that? Right. A little different this Baptism time. 2020. So we are super excited because our baptism this year is going to be at RC Theaters. And so I'm sure you're thinking it's a movie wow. theater. Like, how is this going to work out? Mm -hmm. So we have a portable baptismal that we're going to set up and we're going to put water in and we're going to add some warm water. So don't worry, it's not going to be what super cold. What happens if it leaks? Have we talked to RC Theater about that? We What's have, yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. What happens if it leaks? So the biggest thing, um, probably the biggest question that we get from kids around this is, wait, you're going to put me under water? Like, how long are you going to hold me under? And so there is, there should be no fear around that. Like, you're going to go underwater and come immediately right back up. And so we're going to help you down, and then we're going to pull you up. And so there should be no fear. It's less than two seconds. Um, and it's just, it's super exciting. And so... The baptism is, is mm. going to happen on November the 15th. And um, coming out of this, once we get the schedule all set up, because of social distancing and because we want to be responsible with our crowds, you're going to get um, an email that will have the information in it. So you will be asked to come to either the 9 o'clock service or the 11 o'clock service. And then the baptisms will take place during that service. And I'm sure that we're going to have a whole bunch more details that we haven't even fleshed oh, yeah, out um, that we're going to send to you via email or um, we might shoot you a call or a text, but we're going to get the information to you if you have signed up for baptism. So if you don't sign up and your child wants to get baptized or maybe you want to get baptized and you haven't told us that, we don't have any way of getting you that information. So the important step is if you haven't already done it, to go to southpointforyou.com slash baptism. It's just a quick form, fill out. We're not going to ask for your blood type or anything like that. Good, because I don't um, know mine. Good. Yeah. Not good that you don't know that, but you know. I don't know mine. <laughs> so um, if you're signed up, you're you're good. We've got your information. Um, you should have received an email today um, letting you know about this event or anything else. And so once we have your information, we will make sure that we stay in contact with you um, with what you need to do and what steps you need to take coming out of here. Okay, it looks like that is all the questions we have in our chat. I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight and um, being a part of this baptism roundtable. And a special thank you to our family ministry team. I feel like it's a, a baptism square table. Yeah, it's well, pretty square. It's a rectangle. It's not a baptism. Oh, we don't cut squares. Or, what is it? Rectangles or squares, but squares aren't rectangles or something like that. Like, Are you sure that's right? No, I'm not. I don't know. Did you check that in the Bible? It's <laughs> obviously in the Bible. Okay. Hey, parents, um, just a couple more things um, for you, or one thing, I don't actually know. Um, <laughs> we kind of had this event tonight to kind of kick off conversations for you to have with your kids about baptism. There's so much more information than we can cover just in this short time together. And so if you go to southpointforyou.com slash parents, we've got... Um, videos that we show to our elementary age kids. We've got a video for um, middle and high school students. We've got um, salvation conversation cards um, where you can kind of have conversation with conversations with your kids and students. And this will help you walk through it because 
Like, as a parent, I'm going, oh, wait, what do you mean I have to have all these conversations? <laughs> you can do this. And so we're, we're giving you um, content to talk about um, and kind of answers to help give them. And so. And we're here. Yeah. They can always reach out. We're here. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So we're here. On the bottom of those, um, the salvation questions is our e all of our email addresses. And so if you go to southpointforyou.com slash parents, click on the conversation guide at the bottom of it is all of our email address so you can reach out to us and let us know anything else that i think that's a wrap what do you we guys it. think we did Yay. it we did it okay uh we are gonna pray and then we're gonna say goodbye and we're gonna hope that you guys have a great evening all right uh dear heavenly father uh god we just um come to you today um, with God, we pray for the hearts of each and every kid and student um, and even parents who are looking forward to baptism. God, we pray that um, if they have questions in their heart, that um, you would help them find these answers. Um, God, we just pray that you would continue to guide and to lead them, God. We are just so thankful that um, as they've made the decision to follow you, God, we know that you are going to number their steps, God, and that you are going to lay their path for them. And so, God, we just thank you um, for our time together. I pray that you would continue to guide and lead each family that's out there tonight, God. And we just love you so much. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, friends, thank Amen. you for joining us. And um, from the South Point team here, we'd like to say, don't forget, you, you matter, matter deeply, deeply to God. God. <laughs>